Hey, so what's up, everyone? Uh, it's Brian from Ultimate Upland, and uh, you are watching the first edition of the Upland Game Show. It's a show where we talk about everything outdoors and upland to crown a winner of bird brain trivia. And uh, tonight, with us, joining us tonight, are the esteemed uh, Jason Funk. And Steve, the wonder. <laughs> so, uh, how's things going, guys? So, uh, what's been going on, uh, Funk? You, you're uh, you're sitting in Kansas right now. Steve and I are in Ohio. Um, so, uh, what's going on? Uh, for all of you who aren't aware, there's apparently a pandemic going on right now. Uh, is the state of Kansas locked down, Funk? Yes, sir. We've been uh, we've been locked down. This is week four that I've been working from home or trying to stay home. Luckily, uh, we live out in the wilderness, so it's kind of a good thing. I mean, it's a lot more time with the family, um, learning how to work from home, which is going pretty well, and things, things are okay. I noticed you're cutting your own hair. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> I, 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 I shaved it last night just for you, man. I, uh, <laughs> I, I actually was having to, uh, I don't know if you guys could see, uh, I got kind of like the Jersey Shore thing going on right now. Uh, I, I, the last the last cut got a little out of hand. I don't know what was going on. And uh, Steve, I'm not sure what he's got going on. I'm working my way up slowly. but <laughs> it Started here, I'm just kind of slowly fading. I've got the semi-monk cut going on right now. Lightweight bowl cut. So, yeah. So for those of you that haven't met Jason and Steve, if you can see in the background, apparently this isn't about upland. This is about deer hunting. Um, so, uh, you know. There's ducks back there, too. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Does that count? It, w w we're going to allow it. I mean, future shows, just so everybody knows, you're going to be penalized if there's deer in the background. Is it going to start out at a negative <laughs> point total? <laughs> so the way the show works, I'll jump into that because you guys don't even know. I just invited you on and I haven't really told you exactly how this is going to go down, but we're going to ask a series of questions from the official question stack. You guys are going to answer those questions. The closest one to a right answer or with the right answer will be awarded a point after uh, uh, a series of questions. One of you will be determined the winner and that winner is going to receive, and you're going to like this because I went into the vault for this one. I went and I found a vintage, no longer available, ultimate <laughs> upland t-shirt. <laughs> and I think I like even though Steve's probably eating lots more during the, uh, the COVID virus, he'll even fit in this one. And uh, so you're going to get the shirt and a uh, $25 Cabela's gift card. Nice. So that's what the winner gets. And then um, the loser. So we talked about this because, you know, there is no second place. So, um, yeah, the losers we determined, uh, one of you two guys at the end of this deal is going to have to do a shot of uh, vinegar, I believe, right? What vintage vinegar do we have, Funk? What would you get? Well, I just went into the pantry, and we've got, what is it, balsamic vinegar. <laughs> and it, it's, it's not bad, but, I mean, it's not good either. And Steve, what, what's uh, what's your vintage of vinegar? Oh, I've got a shot glass with some apple cider vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> you guys need to be quiet. <laughs> so let's tell everybody a little bit about um, you guys' uh, 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 bird hunting. Uh, I, I know your crews because we've done some hunting together. Um, but uh, uh, you guys are GSP guys. Why don't you start, Funk? What's your bird hunting crew look like? How long you been bird hunting, and uh, what dogs you hunting with? I fell in love with bird hunting when I was about 13 years old. I'm 45 now, so 30 plus years. I made up. I love it. It's my favorite thing in the world. You see the deer behind me. I deer hunt a couple of weeks a year, but upland upland bird hunting is my favorite thing in the world big open country and a couple of good dogs in front of me just makes me happy i love it more than anything in the world uh we we raised german short hairs um i recently added a an english pointer to the mix just for fun um, we have too many dogs 
but it's fun. We train dogs as well, so it works. What's the what's the dog count at right now, Funk? What what do you, what, what do you got uh, in house right now? Uh, it's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, seven, uh, seven right now. We just added a new pup. Um, but I've got teenage daughters too, so they've got their own dogs. So, so that makes more. But yeah, seven dogs, uh, five of which are bird dogs. Well, we can any dog will hunt birds. We know that. Well, yeah, I do have. I've got a weird one that I take every once in a while, but. Yeah, mostly my short hairs, and now an English pointer will be starting next year. What about you, Steve? Bird hunting. Didn't come into it until, gosh, early 30s. Deer hunted all my life, duck hunting, a little bit of turkey hunting when they came back to Ohio. Uh, always wanted a dog, so I decided to uh, German short hair and got her from a really good kennel here in Ohio really lucky uh, the guy that owned the kennel super nice guy helped me out getting into navda and doing training and stuff with the dog really training you more than you are the dog when you first start out so uh yeah after that um started going out west trying to hunt some birds not a whole lot of them here in ohio and then uh about three or four years ago i ended up with my second short hair um because I always wanted to have one after the first eight years with my first one. Just can't even imagine not being a bird hunter. Just, yeah. All the great adventures I've had out West and yeah, with buddies and meet new people. So it's been amazing. Yeah. Well, since we know you guys are bird dog guys, that's going to lead us into our first question. Both of you guys, GSP guys. Question number one, you got your pads and paper ready. Yes or no? Can bird dogs see blaze orange? Yeah. I'm not going to give any clue. Oh, don't show them yet. Oh, come on. You can say that. Just <laughs> I'll tell you when to reveal in a second. <laughs> Got your answers? Yes, sir. All right. Can bird dogs see blaze orange? What do you say, Funk? Can you see that? No. It Funk. says no. Funk says no. Wonder. Oh, so somebody's going up a point right now. <laughs> Steve says yes. Funk says no. Can bird dogs see blaze orange? Well, the answer is, I'm going to share you a little screen here. We'll see how this works. And no, wrong screen. No, right screen. Can you see? Yeah. Uh, so no, yeah. no is right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dang it. Well, Funk goes up one. Steve goes <laughs> down one. I think it's pretty crazy that everything basically um, warm color over on dogs. Um, it, they see is this weird kind of gray yellow thing. I mean, that's kind of wild to me. Um, that is, that is cool. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. Um, so while we're on talk, topic of blaze orange and, and, and Funk, you said you had, uh, uh, daughters, uh, what's your thought on, uh, blaze pink? On blaze paint? Pink. Oh, well, I'm all for it. You know, I mean, it's, it's a little hard to find that. I don't think they have any. I've got my 18-year-old watching me here, so I don't think we have any Blaze Pink, but I'm okay with it. And what about you, Steve? Are you okay with Blaze Pink? Wearing it yourself. I'm not talking about for your daughter. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, let's go for it. Who cares? As long as I don't get shot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, you know me, I try and go for as little orange or as little pink as possible, but uh, – yeah, I, I'm like plaid. This is my this is my standard hunting wear right here. Um, so you guys, for those of you who've watched this fall, um, both uh, both Steve and Jason came along uh, as part of the uh, Way Upland series. I think Steve appears uh, in episode three or four or four or five. I think it's three or four. And uh, and Jason appears in episode five. Of course, we were out ptarmigan hunting, um, and uh, uh, that was something else. Uh, I think. Well, Steve, you ptarmigan hunted before, but yep. Jason, it was your first time ptarmigan hunting, right? No doubt. Yeah, never done anything like it in my life. It was crazy. 
crazy, terrifying, awesome, all kind of wrapped into one. <laughs> we had some pretty cool moments this fall. Um, uh, what, was that the highlight? Was ptarmigan hunting the highlight of your, uh, of your fall? You don't have For to say me, it. It's not going to offend me. <laughs> It was close. It, we, had, we had some pretty great pheasant hunts in western Kansas. We didn't make our normal North Dakota or Canada trips this year, but yeah, it was it was up there. Having my daughter with me and hunting with you guys, it was it was pretty great. I would just wish the hell I would have got one. Uh, I you know I never I didn't really say anything in the episode, but <laughs> um, uh, I, I, and we saw Elizabeth take shots, um, but uh, something that didn't come up because I was headed downhill. I'd had enough, and you guys were still after it, but. But uh, Jason, uh, what, what happened up there on the mountain after after you kind of got got into them? Two two shots, two shots, easy gimme. Just I missed. I'm shooting downhill, dogs running. It was just I don't know, no excuses. I did have a slight gun malfunction though. You might remember me t talking about my safety was kind of messing up, but uh, I still should have had the bird. Yeah. So now I got to go do it again. I know. I mean, and now, now, now we just got to hope they're back up there, right? Yep. Yep. What about you, Steve? What was the highlight from last year? I'd say definitely that that hunt. Uh, I got to go to Michigan for a grouse hunt, which was pretty nice. But uh, spending two weeks out in Colorado chasing blue grouse and ptarmigan, even though we didn't get into a ton of them, it just you can't beat it. Running around the mountains with your dogs and see. Uh, Jason, what you might not know is also Steve probably a highlight from from this fall is and i got to see him do it he shot the last wild pheasant in ohio well that was highlights like there's uh, none left <laughs> hopefully he bred a couple of hens before he died <laughs> yeah. we did see some heads yeah, we did. Um, a lot of birds so day. so we're, that's going to lead us into question number two um we'll stick with the ptarmigan hunting theme in how many states in the U.S. are you able to hunt ptarmigan? Don't try to cheat. I'm just saying. I don't know. <laughs> you, got, you got your cheater on the side over there? Steve, yeah, you got your answer I, I can't get on the She's... She's she's sitting here. Hi. There's my dog. the dog and the kid. <laughs> she's gonna be on the next episode. We're gonna pit you against her. Okay. She's she's smarter. She's smarter than I am. Well, I'll make the questions dumb questions though. She'll never get them. <laughs> All right, Steve, you got your answer. Yeah, my best guess. All right, what's your guess? Uh, my best guess is five. Funk, what's your answer? Same thing. Oh, oh so uh, the real answer is, oh, I sh I, the real answer is four. So uh, you're uh. both wrong in that regard. I should put a bonus question out there for the four states, but I'm assuming that if you guessed five that you probably know. Um, I I'll let, uh, why don't you alternate, Steve? What's the, what's the, beside, well, I'll give you the first one and then we'll just go around, around the horn. First one's Colorado. I got that one. I would say uh, North Dakota. <clears throat> no, no, that's why I got five. <laughs> well, Funk, what do you think? Wyoming. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I really should have asked the bonus question. Oregon. Nope. Nope. Really? California, Colorado, Utah, Alaska. Really? Yeah. I, I never would have got California. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't think, you know, the, the, um, the area that, that they're at in, Cal or in California doesn't appear to be very big. I, I've never hunted them in California. I've hunted them in Alaska, Colorado, and, uh, and Utah. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, uh, so I guess I, I, I've still got to go, go hunt them in California to round everything out, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel bad so, the states that they're in now. Yeah. We, uh, we covered quite a bit of distance uh, uh, hiking, and I know, Steve, you're wearing a tracker on you. So do I. I wear a tracker. Funk, you wear a tracker on your, on, on when you're hunting? No, just, just the iPhone and the however accurate that counter is. That's, what we, that's all I've got. 
you do you look at it after your hunts or you just kind of go oh uh, sure sure yeah definitely it's kind of a badge of honor to see how many miles you go up what uh what do you think your biggest walk was this year 17 miles you walked 17 in kansas sure yeah but that so that means the dogs probably ran 35 at least i always i always figure it's twice what i do yeah i've tracked it some uh and and i think most of the time rio my setter is going double or two and a half times and of course labs ida is going about one and a half and why most of the time i carry him so uh, (laughs) he's not going nearly as far what about you steve how far do you think you covered this year biggest biggest hunt i think mine was like between 14 and 15 yeah getting after it our biggest hunts in colorado um I don't know that day that you hunted with me, Jason, we didn't go that far, but no. you spun around up there on that hill quite a bit. Um, I think that I want to say that day was four or five. I mean, way less, but it's the elevation, obviously <laughs> changes the game. We only, we only did two, 2000 feet of vertical gain. And that one, Steve exactly. actually hit his highest, uh, his highest uh, elevation this year. And I think we probably did on the hike into La Plata from the South. I'm guessing we did eight miles maybe a little bit more and elevation gain was i don't know it was sick 3500 i didn't we never made to the summit so but in that vein so next question how many steps does it take the average person to walk a mile according to the los alamos national wellness lab uh this one sucks i always make fun of people who count steps I know, and I, and and Steve's got the tracker on his arm, but he's not an average person. He's like a baby gorilla, so his steps are probably way less. <laughs> okay, let me think. Hmm. You guys got it locked in. Yep. As close as I can guess. All right, show me your answers. What do you got? Go ahead, Jason. 1,700. Oh. 1,250. Uh-oh. And with that answer, according to the Los Alamos National Lab Wellness Center, the average person, it takes 2,000 steps. Funk pulls ahead with another point. Two to nothing. Yes. With two I'm questions go ahead remaining. Yeah, go ahead put that away. It's all right. <laughs> I'll blame it on dinner. I had a great big bowl of spaghetti. <laughs> you got your bucket ready? Yeah. <laughs> we, we had venison shepherd's pie tonight. Oh, nice. Another nice. knock against the bird hunter. The quarantine is treating you well. You don't yeah. look like you've missed a couple of any meals. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I've been running, okay? Leave me alone. So let's talk about shotguns. Um, uh, what is, uh, uh, Steve, what's your uh, standard carry shotgun? And then uh, if you could have any shotgun you, you could think of, uh, what, would, what, would you, what would you use? Uh, I use a 20 gauge Browning feather right now. Uh, I also have a half of a Franke. <laughs> SL, which I really liked. Uh, if I could have a shotgun, I think either one of those right now I'm completely satisfied with. I don't, I don't really know enough about any other models that uh, I've shot a bunch of other ones, but I really like my Browning. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Jason? My current favorite gun in, in the safe is a CZ 28-gauge side-by-side. It weighs about five pounds. I just love it. Um, kills birds like crazy pheasants i mean it, you think a 28 is not big enough but it's that's that's my favorite but it's also my daughter's favorite so i often don't get to carry it so i've got a 12 gauge over and under um my favorite would be i don't know it's hard to say anything in the 15 to twenty thousand dollar range custom made crazy <laughs> fancy you know double barrel i'm a, I'm a double barrel guy I'd pro- a 20. I'd probably like to have a 20. I've never had a 20. 
Yeah, so. I think we're all uh, we're all the doubles guys. But that brings up our next yeah. question. In 1909, A.H. Fox delivered a 12 gauge grade F side by side to Teddy Roosevelt, who said, "I really think this is the most beautiful gun I've ever seen." In 2010, it was sold at auction. How much did it bring? I'm going to show you a picture of it. It was in a box. Don't, don't forget to factor that into your price. Apparently, on top of one of the barrels, it was engraved with his uh, name. Um, uh, grade F's pretty high in the, uh, in, in, the, in the Fox family, I believe. Got your guess worked up, Steve? No clue. Yeah. I know. That's what makes these questions great. Because <laughs> no. neither one of you has an advantage. <laughs> they are good. <laughs> All right. Let's see your answer. Let's start with Funk. 1.2 million. 1.2. That's a good guess. Good guess, Steve. What about you? 250K. 250K. Nice. Well, unfortunately, um, an attorney in Texas got that gun, and he paid eight hundred and sixty-two thousand five hundred dollars. What a crazy person! <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want you wouldn't pay that for Teddy Roosevelt's gun. No. Well, I think that Funk's closer, so that makes it three to nothing in favor of Funk. <laughs> let me get. Let me ask you this one: You say you get that gun, would you shoot it? Uh, no doubt, yes. Absolutely. Yep. No, I would sell it. <laughs> She's going to sell it and buy property. <laughs> That's right. I'd shoot it first. I'd put a good scratch yeah. on that thing. I'd fall on it somewhere. You know how the rib on my gun's, my gun's bent like I showed you guys? I'd definitely I'd put a nice ding in that thing. I'd be like, yeah, okay, you can have it now. You, know, you wouldn't fact figure that that would probably de degrade the value. Funk, you ever do any – Um, what was the first bird you shot out there in Kansas? Was it a pheasant or uh, – are you a lifelong Kansas guy? Yeah, lifelong Kansas. When I was a kid, it was quail. Bob White quail were everywhere in the in the 80s. Um, just before I could drive, walking them up from my folks' house, they were just everywhere. I mean, 10 cubby days were nothing. So, grew up shooting Mr. Bob White. And there was a few pheasants around, fell in love with pheasants. That was That was how I grew up. What about you, Steve? What was your first uh, upland bird? Wild. Uh, <clears throat> pheasant out in South Dakota, followed shortly by sharp tailed grouse. You remember the, the, uh, the days when we could actually hear Bob White here in Ohio? Nope. It's a long time ago, but we had him. Um, I remember out at my grandpa's house, uh, uh, he had a little pasture. It was kind of uh, in a swale. You probably actually been out by there, Steve, when we were growing up at one point. And, uh, um, we up there by the garage in the morning, you'd go out there and you could hear them down in the pasture. They'd be down in there and you could hear them calling. And uh, of course that was, I mean, I, it's, it's surprising. I can remember that cause that would have been before 78 or right there at 78. Um, and then the, the blizzard came by and killed everything. But Steve got his first, uh, wild quail in, in, uh, in Kansas. Yeah. Cut it in half. <clears throat> <laughs> That's a good shot. A little close. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of quail, let's just move on to the last question. Even though at this point, I mean, Funk has Funk has the lead and can't be beat. <laughs> but let's go ahead and ask the final question. According to Calorie King, how many calories are in a whole skin on quail? Skin on. Skin on. Hmm. She's taking it pretty seriously. Uh, no, clue. no clue. Just, it's just for pride now. It's he's got to get one. Yeah. <laughs> 185 calories. Steve gets 185. What about you, Jason? 400. Uh. Well, 
Surprise, surprise, surprise. Steve finally wins a point. 209 calories in a coil, according to Calorie King. Mm. So there you have I did have a, um, a, a tiebreaker question, but I, 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 I could reserve it or we could double down. I mean. No, I only have one shot down here, so. <laughs> well, congratulations, Jason. Uh, you are the first official winner of the Upland Game Show uh, pandemic version. Uh, 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 you get the, the uh, magical from the vault t-shirt. You get the gift card. It'll be uh, dropped in the mail to you if the uh, post office is still open uh, tomorrow. And without further ado, let's go ahead and watch Steve do his shot of vinegar. Upland. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't throw up. Yay. Not, Not yet. yet. <laughs> well, hey, it was great seeing you guys. Uh, I look forward to uh, future adventures with you. Thanks for participating in the first ever Upland Game Show. Uh, for those of you who are interested in participating in the future, uh, go ahead and DM us. Uh, leave comments about the questions uh, that we asked tonight. Uh, if you've got ideas for other questions, feel free to leave comments. Um, of course, smash that subscribe button down there. That will certainly help us out. And uh, uh, let's keep it real. Uh, everybody stay safe. Uh, keep your social distance, I guess. And, uh, and uh, we'll see you next week with the next episode. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Brian.